We're ready. Okay. Are we good? Oh, we're good right. to go. Hey, welcome to Chaplain Chat, and we are at a jail support meeting on St. Patrick's Day. And we want to scan the group here. We're scanning the group. Smile and wave. <laughs> Woo! And we have a jail theme, don't we, folks? Yes. And we've been practicing it, don't we? Yes. And what is our jail theme? Through God, people change. All right, you did good. And uh, now we're scanning back to us. All right. Oh, whoa, is this good? All right, this is good. Hey, this, we are on tape. This is St. Patrick's Day. And we wanted to share something about St. Patrick, because Patrick was a... Oh gosh, uh, back in the 4th century, if you don't know about this story, he, got, uh, he, he was captured, put as a slave in Ireland. And that's where he served time. He escaped, he went back to his homeland, and God called Patrick back to the place where he was a slave. And I wanted to read to you one thing Patrick said, because that's where he came to know God while he was incarcerated. Okay. Patrick, sa Patrick said, but after I came to Ireland, it was then that I was made shepherd of the flock, day after day, and so I did. I would pray at all times, right through the day, more and more of the love of God and fear grew within me, and my faith grew, so the spirit became more active. In snow, frost, rain, I could hardly notice any discomfort. I was never slack, but always full of energy. It is clear to me now, this was due to the God spirit being within me. Meet little children's book that I read this out. You know, and that's interesting. And Patrick goes back and ministers. Well, the reason I'm having Ray here, Ray, where were you at one time in your life? Uh, lost and in jail. Yeah. How did you get the jail, Ray? Well, not being good. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good, Ray. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ray, while you were in jail, like Patrick came to know Jesus in jail, did you have a God encounter with uh, Jesus in jail? Oh yeah, Jesus is, he's in jail at this moment, you know, all the time he's there. And, and how did you, how did you come to know him? How did, how did Jesus come to know you? Well, I was looking at life, you know, they wanted to give me a life sentence in prison back in 1995, and uh, I experienced, uh, that moment of looking at life in prison, and a, and a week after I got the news that I was looking at life, my mom passed away mm -hmm. while I was in jail, and I couldn't go to the funeral. It was just like a ton of bricks just fell on me, and wow. that's when I cried out, and I said, like somebody mentioned earlier, I fear that God that people talk about that could change somebody changed me. Wow. wow. And um, I ended up only getting three years, and I did a year and a half. Um, accepted the Lord when I was in San Quentin. Wow. So, uh, yeah. And then, Ray, you got out. But, Ray, you're back in jail again, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Why are you back in jail? Because I go and I minister to the brothers in there. Just like Patrick did. <laughs> wow. Like Patrick. What's that do for you? Well, it um, it humbles me. You know, it, at uh, 20 years of my life, like this young lady back there said, I was in and out of jail. I started doing time when I was 10. And... Um, Finally, it got to the point to where, you know, I needed change, but I didn't know how. And God was the only one that did that. For me, uh, and I shared this with you before and probably with Helen and a couple of other people, right now I am ministering to uh, a, a gentleman in, in Unit 22 who he is a high priest in this satanic church. Um He's uh, got 827 people in the order of the black flame that are under him. And I met him three months ago while having a Bible study. He was there. He came down. He chose to come down there. And he was kind of contradicting everything that I was saying through the word of through the scripture. So a gentleman in the background asked him, hey, Ray, the reason why he knows so much about the Bible, have him lift his shirt. And when I asked him to lift his shirt, he pulled up his shirt and he had a pentagram of the satanic symbol tattooed on his chest with fallen angel. He had Lucifer tattooed on his neck. Now, I mean, he is just a billboard of, of, of the satanic cult. So I asked him, well, why are you here? And he said, I'm here to learn about my enemy. I have nothing against you. Whoa. So the enemy I, being God. Yeah. yeah. So I said, no, if you, have, uh, if you have beef with God, you have beef with me because I am in his army. Wow. wow. And 
we had a, a, a discussion going on. There was no hostility. There was no anger or nothing. It was just like wow, and everybody in the in, the, in that multi-purpose room were actually kind of like like they were they were looking at a war happening, but it wasn't, you know. Well, to make a long story short, short, the last time I went to the jail two weeks ago, through all the ministering, he asked me, I, I, I make it a point every time I go to go to his cell. Whether they pull him out as a group or not, I'll, before I leave, I'll go to his cell. Um, and when I went to him, he was telling me that his dad had came and was sharing. His dad is a Christian man. His mom is an elder in the satanic church. And that's a weird combination as a family. <laughs> <laughs> so as ministering to him, he asked me uh, if I would pray with him. And he asked me, why do you keep coming to my cell? I said, well, you know what? From that first moment that we had that encounter in that room, I knew and I felt within myself that God had orchestrated this relationship between you and I. And I don't come here to bash Christ on you. I don't come here to, to hammer the scripture of God down your throat. I come here to share something with you. And I opened it up and I read 1 Corinthians 13 to him. I said, I can do all these different things, but if I don't have love for you or all these guys in here, it's nothing. And then when I started to read that to him and I read Psalm 91 to him, I looked up and his eyes began to water. And he asked me, would you pray for me? And right now, he is on the urge of accepting Christ into his life. Wow. Wow. With stu consistency wow. of going back and just sharing love with them. Wow. That's what I get out of going to the jail. Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, Amen. What's our theme again, folks? Do God people change? God bless. Ray, thank you. Can, can I thank all? Real quick? Oh, yes, you can. Can we pray for Robert? Let's do. Would you?